you guys today. This time we're going to talk about Randy Orton. We're going to talk about the beginning of the legend killer, of how he started this character. Now, when he first started, he was first debuted on SmackDown. He has first match against Hardcore Holly, but he got traded to Raw. And he also was injured for a short period of time. But while he was injured, he did a little segment called Randy News Network to give you a day by day how he was doing. Slow in the process, he was originally a face, but he became a heel. And he shortly joined Evolution when he assisted Triple H in his feud with Scott Steiner. Now, while he was in Evolution, he did start become call himself the Legend Killer which means he will start taking out legends, Hall of Famers, men that's been in the wrestling industry for many, many years. His first feud was with Shawn Michaels because he first started calling himself the legend killer when he went on the highlight reel of Chris Jericho's segment on Monday Night Raw. It all started when he screwed over Shawn Michaels when he had a match against Ric Flair at Bad Blood. He interfered and cost Michaels the match. Michaels won a match against him at the Unforgiven pay-per-view, which was in September. Now, before he did have his official match with HBK, he also had a few with Mick Foley, too, which I want to explain later as well. But when he did have his first big few was HBK. He had a match against them. They had a good back and forth match at Unforgiven. However, Ric Flair assisted him when he gave him brass knuckles. When he was coming off the top rope, he hit Shawn Michaels in the face. He fell on top of him while he was trying to do a suplex. And he pinned a one, two, three. And he won the match at Unforgiven. Now, I'm going to go back a little bit. Before the big feud with HBK, he also started a feud with Mick Foley. It was on the June 23rd episode of Raw, where they was doing a celebration of Mick Foley's achievements. Now, backstage, while Mick Foley was signing a book for Vince McMahon, he saw Randy Orton and Ric Flair. And first, Randy Orton saw that Ric Flair and Mick Foley had a choice of words. They start brawling, and then he came in and feared he attacked Mick Foley from behind. And then when he did attack him from behind, he beat him up, took him into the stairwell, and he kicked him down the stairs. He did a little punt. That's when he first started doing a punt, but it was a little, it wasn't the punt that he does now. So when he did do that punt, that really kicked off the feud. Mick Foley was upset, obviously. He won a match against Randy Orton in the near future. Because Mick Foley became the general manager after he took over Stone Cold Steve Austin's position as co-GM. So Mick Foley was co-GM in that time. Now, I want to shift a little forward because he was infused with other wrestlers in between when he was infused with Mick Foley. While he was feud with Mick Foley, Mick Foley was not full time. He, he was on air, off air. He took time off in between. While he in that process with Foley, in between time, he only not only had a few with HBK, but he also had a match against RVD at the Armageddon pay per view of December. It was against RVD for the Intercontinental Championship. Mick Foley was the special guest referee. He defeated RVD with an RKO, and he became the Intercontinental Champion, his first championship in WWE. So that was a big achievement for Randy Orton. Now, after he won that championship, him and Mick Foley, again, he wanted to challenge Randy Orton for that Intercontinental Championship later on on an episode of Raw, but he walked out. 
So that match never happened. That's when he spat his face, called him a coward. However, they met each other again at the Royal Rumble next year of 2004. Mick Foley eliminated Randy Orton in the Rumble. He eliminated himself. They were brawling each other back, back and forth, down the ramp and backstage. Randy Orton hit him with a chair. Now, this led to evolution, which is Batista and Ric Flair. While Triple H focused on the World Heavyweight Championship, they got into that feud, and they were they were beating up Mick Foley. It was beating him up backstage. It was one segment where Batista powerbombed Mick Foley through a table. And it, he was outnumbered at that point. And that's when Mick Foley called The Rock. He returned. They reunited the Rock and Star Connection. They had a three-on-two handicap match at WrestleMania 20. However, they they lost the match against Evolution. But Randy Orton hit the RKO on Mick Foley, pinned a one, two, three. The next pay-per-view was that backlash, which is they made was the major match for the Intercontinental Championship. Mick Foley wanted to face him in um, <clears throat> a hardcore fight. Where they use any weapons, mostly the barbed wire steel, barbed wire bat, which Mick Foley called Barbie. And however, Evolution was banned from ringside, and they had an epic match where it was lots of blood, lots of good spots. Randy Orton tried to do the RKO, he felt thumbtacks. Very iconic match. It was Randy Orton's coming of age match, pretty much. So that was a good feud between them. And after he defeated him at Backlash, that was the end of that feud. So at this point, he had defeated a couple of legends. He called himself the Legend Killer. And now at this point, this is early, mid-2004. So he was still an Intercontinental Champion. He had a couple of title defenses. He defeated Shelton Benjamin. He had a match against him, but he lost the Intercontinental Championship in vengeance against Edge in July. Now, at that point, he had the Intercontinental Championship for 210 days, which is the longest reign for the Intercontinental Championship in a long time in the past seven years. So he had a very good title run with that belt. And after that feud with Edge was going on. He feuded with him a little bit. He didn't regain an Intercontinental Championship. Now, at this point, it was the very beginning stage of the Legend Killer run. But at this point, you're going to see it's going to be cracks with Evolution. But while he was in Evolution, Randy Orton was able to make a name for himself on his own without Evolution. So that's what I liked about the match with Backlash. He did. He won the match clean. He, like I said, was no evolution allowed. There was no interference, no anything. He won it straight up clean. And I think that's when Randy Orton started to gain some respect in the business. Not just being a third generation superstar, but on his own merit. Now that's the end of the beginning of legend killer i'm going to have more videos about randy orton 